This week on Outdoor Bound TV, I get the opportunity to travel back to my hometown of Rib Lake, Wisconsin, where we take part in the annual Rib Lake Area Fish and Game Association Dave Marcus Walleye Tournament. And later, I get a chance to sit down with Dave to talk about his legendary NASCAR Sprint Cup career, his special friendship with Dale Earnhardt, and to discuss how his central Wisconsin roots helped shape not only his racing career, but his deep love for the outdoors. There's a fish. We got him. Look at that. Nice buck. Did you get that one? Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Colby Chrysler Center. Welcome home to Colby Chrysler. Pro Designs, Sign and Printing Solutions. Canada Outdoor Adventures, professionally outfitted hunting trips from Canada, New Zealand, and beyond. Hey, do you want to stay up to date on the cast and crew of Outdoor Bound TV? Find them on Facebook, or you can log on to their website, outdoorbound.tv. At Colby Chrysler Center, we know that buying a new car is a big deal, so we do our best to make you feel right at home. We know your time is important, so you won't find any gimmicks or hassles here. Just a great selection and unbeatable prices. Good looks, a comfortable ride, a Hemi engine, safety, and the ability to haul just about anything. What more could you ask for in a new truck? Our commitment to you doesn't end with the sale. We are here for you anytime you need us. At Colby Chrysler, it's all about making you feel at home and ready to hit the road. Welcome home to Colby Chrysler. Conceptual design, quality printing, and custom applications. Pro Designs, sign and printing solutions. Over 20 years of professional service and experience. Pro Designs in Medford, from original concept to finished product. Get the recognition your business deserves. Pro Designs, sign and printing solutions. Offering professionally guided, all-inclusive packages, Canada Outdoor Adventures is a U.S.-based company specializing in great hunting adventures in Alberta, British Columbia, New Zealand, and beyond. Whether you're seeking that trophy of a lifetime, planning a hunt for you or your group, or taking your son or daughter on their first adventure, let Canada Outdoor Adventures handle all the details for you. To contact a pro staff member near you, visit our website, Canada Outdoor Adventures, the adventure of a lifetime. Hi everyone, welcome to Outdoor Bound TV. I'm your host, Kurt Walbeck. You know, we talk a lot on this show about the important role that mentors play introducing young people to the outdoors. Well, this week's show is special for me because I get to travel back to my hometown of Rib Lake, Wisconsin, where I catch up with one of my early mentors, NASCAR legend, Dave Marcus. Now, after Dave retired from the NASCAR circuit, he and the Rib Lake Area Fish and Game Association teamed up to sponsor a walleye tournament each spring on this lake in northern Taylor County. Here to explain how the Fish and Game Association is working to help improve the walleye habitat and populations in surrounding lakes is Association President Jerry Butler. Uh, Rib Lake uh, is a 315 acre lake. It uh, is very, very shallow. There is very little structure, if any at all. Hi, I'm Jerry Butler from Rib Lake, Wisconsin. I'm the president of the Rib Lake Area Fish and Game Association. Rib Lake Fish and Game Association has been around for 60 years. There's a history of logging in the Rib Lake area and the uh, the lake was basically considered dead years ago. And the Fish and Game or, uh, organized, they uh, started cleaning up the lake. It was full of weeds. They purchased uh, a barge, had a uh, weed cutter on it. They were cutting weeds. They put a dike on the backside of the lake and raised the water le uh, level about a foot and a half. And a number of years ago, one of the improvements we did to the uh, lake was we built a walleye spawning reef. 
We did it over the ice in the wintertime. Uh, we had a couple of truck drivers that were brave enough to haul loads of rock on the ice and built a nice long windrow uh, on the ice. Uh, one truck driver quit towards the end there because as the weight on the ice was pushing the ice down, the water was coming up and he wasn't going to go back on the ice with his truck anymore. We cleaned up the shoreline. The, the uh, east shoreline is, is awful rocky and we built the reef for additional spawning that, to help with the uh, walleye in this lake. The walleyes will go up uh, Copper Creek when they spawn. Actually, we do what we call it a walleye watch in the springtime to keep the violators from spearing because the lake, the, it's only a little creek that's about two feet wide and it fills up. So you can actually just pick them out with your hands if you wanted to. So we go babysit the walleyes during that time so that nobody grabs them. We have worked with the University of Wisconsin to try to determine what we can do with the sediment that's in this lake from the old sawmill. And we're the Army Corps of Engineers is willing to do the project, but there's a lot of hoops and paperwork to jump through, and that's years and years away, and it's very expensive. So we're working to try to see what direction we can go for funding. They're determining if the material that's in here is something that can be sold, does it, does it have a fertilizer value, what is it type thing. So that's what they're working on right now, trying to figure out how we can get the funds to clean this lake up, because there's about 20, 25 feet of silt in the bottom of this lake left from the old sawmill. The Rib Lake Area Fish and Game has three major fundraisers a year. One is this uh, walleye contest that we're hosting this weekend. In August, we have a, a concession stand for Ice Age Days, which is our local carnival. And then uh, first Saturday in January every year, we host a uh, ice fishing contest also. We use the money for uh, rearing our walleyes in three rearing ponds that we have. We stock uh, lakes in Taylor and Price County. There's a total of 16 lakes are on our list from the DNR. We stock the maximum number of walleye in each lake that the DNR allows us to do. It costs us about a dollar a walleye because of the, the walleye uh, fry we get for free from the DNR, but the uh, fatheads that we use the minnows to feed the walleye are fairly expensive. So even though the walleye fry is free, it still costs a lot of money to raise these things. We'll be putting them in the lakes, they'll be five to seven, eight inches, something like that. The biggest fish that we've seen was been, has been in our fike nets actually, because we uh, remove bullheads every spring from Rib Lake, there's a lot of bullheads in this lake. So we put fike nets in, and right in front of Camp 28 this year, actually we had a 31 incher in the net that we put back in the lake. We had a lot of fish over 24 inches, we had 29, 27 inches, they're just some monsters. Additional programs that we do is we have scholarships with the school. We do two scholarships, or $500 each, uh, for a conservation student or a construction student. We have about 150 members, but like so many organizations, we have about 30 active. They're there when we have a major uh, event. We support other organizations. Uh, the Tannery Creek Parkway group, they run the ballpark in town here, and we put some park benches up for them this year. One of our members uh, passed away here not too long ago. He left us some money. So we built a pier in his honor. And then we built a park along with it. It's called the Fish and Game Memorial Park. And we uh, built a nice little patio area for seating and stuff. Actually, they had a couple weddings held on that already. This weekend, we're hosting the 11th annual Dave Marcus Rib Lake Fish and Game Walleye Contest. Uh, it started out, uh, Dave Marcus bought Camp 28, the local restaurant supper club in Rib Lake, and uh, he and a friend, Barry Anderson, decided to start a walleye contest to kind of help the Rib Lake Fish and Game raise some money and help Dave get some customers. The teams for the fishing contest are coming from a number of states. Uh, Dave Marcus has friends everywhere, so we have some of his friends from Alabama, North Carolina, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois. When people show up for the walleye tournament, they'll be here on Friday. There's a number of boats fishing today, trying to find their hot spots. Uh, a lot of fishermen are spending the night at Camp 28 in the motel. In the morning, they're gonna open up at 5.30, serve a breakfast brunch for the fishermen. At 6.30, we're gonna go upstairs and we're gonna go through the uh, rules of the tournament. Uh, this is walleye only. Catch and release is recommended, but not required. If you do keep a walleye, we will tag it and keep it at the registration station, and you can pick it up after the contest. 
No fish under 15 inches allowed. This year, uh, you can keep up to five walleye per person. That's 10 per boat. Due to the amount of boats, no motor trolling will be allowed. You can position only with your motor. A 10 foot minimum distance between boats must be maintained during the contest. All decisions are made by the officials and they will be final. Around seven o'clock or so, we're gonna inspect the boats. As soon as all the boats are inspected and everybody's accounted for, we blow an air horn and turn everybody loose. They cannot go anywhere to shore except for Camp 28. These fishermen are going to have to move around a lot to find any little hole because a difference of a foot is going to make the difference in the depth. So you're going to see boats moving all over and hopefully we'll have a number of them that find the hot spots. I'm going to guess for, to win the tournament, it's going to take four fish. And I'm going to say the total inches is going to be around an average of 18 inches per fish. The biggest fish that I can remember being registered was 26 inches. You can have five fish per person, so actually you could have 10 fish per, per boat, uh, anything over 15 inches. They can register fish anytime. It's actually to their benefit to bring in even just one fish right off the bat because the first fish registered is the tiebreaker. So if two people catch the same size fish, the first guy in is the uh, is the winner
Offering professionally guided, all-inclusive packages, Canada Outdoor Adventures is a U.S.-based company specializing in great hunting adventures in Alberta, British Columbia, New Zealand, and beyond. Whether you're seeking that trophy of a lifetime, planning a hunt for you or your group, or taking your son or daughter on their first adventure, let Canada Outdoor Adventures handle all the details for you. To contact a pro staff member near you, visit our website, Canada Outdoor Adventures, the adventure of a lifetime. At Kobe Chrysler Center, we know that buying a new car is a big deal, so we do our best to make it feel right at home. We know your time is important, so you won't find any gimmicks or hassles here. Just a great selection and unbeatable prices. Good looks, a comfortable ride, a Hemi engine, safety, and the ability to haul just about anything. What more could you ask for in a new truck? Our commitment to you doesn't end with the sale. We are here for you anytime you need us. At Colby Chrysler, it's all about making you feel at home and ready to hit the road. Welcome home to Colby Chrysler. Conceptual design, quality printing, and custom applications. Pro Designs, sign and printing solutions. Over 20 years of professional service and experience. Pro Designs in Medford, from original concept to finished product. Get the recognition your business deserves. Pro Designs, sign and printing solutions. Well, originally from Wausau, Wisconsin, which is about, I guess, 50 miles here south of Rib Lake. My father, yes, was a big fisherman. My grandpa took my brother and I fishing all the time. So, uh, you know, we, we come from a fishing family, a hunting family. Um, actually, up in this part of the country, uh, your father and I, we raced stock cars together, uh, Marlon Walbeck. And uh, I came up here and deer hunted a lot with your dad, and we did a lot of fishing also. You were probably just as influential in my upbringing, and in fact, people ask me a lot of times about how I got involved fishing and hunting and so on. Well, well I had two mentors, my dad and Dave Marcus. And, <laughs> and whether it be uh, fishing on the Willow Floats or hunting up a Triple I or whatever, uh, that was instrumental in my upbringing. What, what are some of your memories when you'd come back at, you know, your time off on the Winston Cup circuit, you'd come back in the fall and, and do a little hunting. What do you remember about those times? Well, you know, I, I used to hunt a lot with your father and of course, we both enjoyed deer hunting and uh, he had some guys that helped sponsor his race car down from Wisconsin Dells and they come up here hunting so we had a pretty good group of guys and a bunch of guys that loved to hunt loved to go out in the evening have a couple beers eat a big steak that's you know northern Wisconsin style get some fresh fish and just cook them up and, and we just always had a good time. We enjoyed life and, and tried to make the most of it. And it was a lot of fun, no doubt it, about it. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> now, when you were involved on the on the Cup Circuit, you always had a habit of bringing some pretty interesting characters back here to Wisconsin, whether it be hunting or fishing and so on. Uh, maybe talk about some of the guys that you bring back here with you. Well, I, I've had a lot of them up here with me. And of course, my closest friend, Dale Earnhardt, Dale never actually made it up here with me. Bobby Allison, Donnie Allison spent some time up here with me. They've been up here in Rib Lake, their wives. We've gone fishing, we've gone salmon fishing over in Lake Michigan. Um, and, and everybody I did bring up here, a lot of guys that worked for me, mechanics and stuff like that, always had a good time up here with the hunting and the fishing and going out. You know, Wisconsin, uh, especially northern Wisconsin, is a place where people seem to congregate in the bars and they talk fishing and hunting and the whole families come, you know, it ain't just the guys. And it's just the way of life here in northern Wisconsin. One of the comments that a lot of people uh, I remember that would, would come along with you here made is that they always felt right at home right here in Rib Lake. You mentioned that, but you'd be quite surprised. A lot, a lot of people that I brought up here with me, when we would go back, they would say, you know, they talk about southern hospitality where we're at, they really should come up here. Well, having been uh, friends with Dave Marcus, he's been a friend of the families for uh, shoot as long as I can remember. And uh, uh, Dave was uh, got involved with this tournament, and I've been coming up here, and this is my fourth tournament with him, and it's uh, it's a great time. All the lakes and all the North Woods is fantastic. It's just it's a unique part of the world. I just love it up here, uh, but primarily the people. I mean, they're just 
fantastic people. You can't, I can't say enough about them. I've got to know a lot of the local business owners and they've been just more than hospitable and just gracious hosts and I've uh, just really enjoyed coming here. You always feel welcome. You always, I've always felt like I was just part of the town when I got here. So it's just been a, uh, I mean, it, I always look forward to this. This is, this is the highlight of my year, being able to come up here and, and spend some time in Rib Lake, Wisconsin. Everyone that I've ever brought up here has said they felt very, very welcome. I know you and Dale Earnhardt were very good friends and you were very close. Maybe talk a little bit about your relationship with Dale. Well, Dale was quite a character uh, and, and a better friend you could never find. And uh, uh, the way we actually became real close friends is he actually started driving for Rod Osterlund, which a team I had driven for the previous year and quit. And we were racing at Martinsville, Virginia. And we were running a quite a bit of the race together and side by side, and Dale just kept leaning on me and kept leaning on me. I got mad and spun him up. And he didn't talk to me after that, probably for two months. And then one day he walked up to me, I think we were at Rockingham, and he grabbed you around the neck and jerked you over there with that big grin, you know. And he said, you know that deal at Martinsville? He said, I had that coming. And he said, my daddy always taught me, if you had a problem with anyone, settle it today or right now, get it over with, don't carry it down the road. And he said, I had that coming and we just became the very best of friends after that. I know you got a chance to spend some time with him in the outdoors and do some hunting and fishing. Tell us about that. Well, yeah, we did a quite a bit of deer hunting and stuff. And, and of course, uh, Bill Jordan from Real Tree, Bill would come with us. And uh, one day Dale called Helen up I believe it was on a Wednesday afternoon and says to Helen, you tell Dave to be at the airport in Asheville tomorrow, we're going hunting. And you know, I'm going to pick him up at 6 o'clock, tell him to don't be late. So I mean, like, I'm all excited. Did he say where we're going or what we hunt? No, he just said all you need to do is just be there. Everything else was handled. So I'm at that airport the next morning, you know, 5.30. I wait and I wait and I wait and they don't show up. He finally gets her about 7 or 7.15. He walks in grinning from ear to ear. He says, I'll bet you've been here since six o'clock, ain't you? <laughs> and he just liked doing pranks like that. But anyhow, we got on the airplane, we went to Texas, and we went hunting. I think he and Bill each had a trophy hunt. And um, uh, along with that comes what they call management deer. And I, Dale said, you can shoot my management deer and Bill's, and they were hunting trophies. So for me, that was a big deal, because I couldn't afford to go on a hunt like that. But. Uh, and we've done some of that kind of stuff, but, but then the, the animals that I have mounted down here in the bar, but the moose and the caribou, is a hunt that Richard Childress gave to me when I retired in British Columbia at Miles Bradford. And uh, uh, Richard came along on that hunt also. So, uh, and we had a great time that, that time too. After you retired from the Winston Cup Series, uh, you kind of split time between here in Wisconsin uh, and in Asheville, North Carolina, uh, and you had something going on here in Wisconsin. Tell us a little bit about what was going on here at Camp 28. Well, I bought Camp 28 here in Rib Lake, Wisconsin. A lot of people get a misconception when they hear Camp 28, they think I have a hunting camp or a fishing camp. It is a bar, a motel, and a restaurant called Camp 28 because of a logging camp that was here in Rib Lake, Wisconsin from 1881 to 1948. Well, one of the biggest logging camps in the state of Wisconsin and one of the longest running camps. There was also, there were two mills actually here in Rib Lake. Mm -hmm. But that is why Camp 28 is called Camp 28. It's not, a, it's not specifically a hunting camp or a fishing camp. We do have a lot of fishermen stay here and a lot of hunters, but it's actually a Northern Wisconsin bar, motel, and restaurant. Now, you co-sponsor the Dave Marcus Walleye Tournament with the Rib Lake Area Fishing Game Association. Maybe tell us a little bit about how this annual event came about. A guy that I had run in the place suggested, why don't we have a Dave Marcus Walleye Tournament in the spring? Help the guys out with the fishing game. So I said, well, that sounds great. I'm going to do that. So what we do is we, we hold it here in this facility on Rib Lake right in front of the place and they pay back 80% of the prize money to all the contestants. The rest of the money and the raffles and the things like that that they have is all used to, to put minnows and get uh, rearing stock walleyes. They have two rearing poles. 
and they use those walleyes are those rearing ponds to stock a lot of the lakes here in the Rib Lake area. In fact, I think they stock like five different lakes every year with the walleyes that they raise in those ponds. I think the DNR furnishes those walleyes. But they buy a lot of minnows and things like that to put in those ponds uh, for those little walleyes to eat. So this is what it ended up to be. This year is the 11th annual Dave Marcus Walleye Tournament and everyone's been a great success. The one we had today, uh, uh, I think there were like 36 walleyes caught, and I think the winning boat actually was my cousin, Sherman Marcus, and his partner. And um, I believe that they had their limits, which was five walleyes each person. I think their catch totaled like 178 inches. That's right, they had a very good catch. Which today. is an excellent catch. Now, how did you fare on? I, I got a chance to, to see you out on the water with Gino, a good friend of yours from Wausau, Wisconsin, and I know you two were paired up together. How did you guys fare on the water? Today? Well, that's probably not worth talking about. <laughs> Gino caught one walleye. I caught a lot of bullheads. I uh, caught a bunch of tree branches. I know you guys got that on film, so I might as well admit it. But I, Gino had a walleye on, and I netted it, and I had a rappella laying on top of the night crawler box. I tripped on something in the boat and got down on top of that night crawler box and got a rappella bait stuck in the seat of my pants. And thankfully, you guys weren't there to film that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry we missed that. <laughs> What's next for Dave Marcus? I know you've been working hard at the farm getting all your food plots in and getting ready for the deer hunting season coming up. I know you just finished up with a turkey hunt. What's next or what's on tap for the summer here for you? Well, I mean, we'll be going back to North Carolina in a couple weeks, and, and I got projects going down there. But here in Wisconsin, um, I'll be back in probably the latter part of June. I'm going to plant some more food plots for the deer, which I do every year. I deer hunt here in Wisconsin every fall. Um, and I'm going to, of course, do some fishing. Um, I burn a lot of firewood, so I cut firewood. Um, I just stay busy all the time. I, I still have my shop in uh, North Carolina. Uh, the race car that I actually retired was from NASCAR. And uh, we just went to Wilmington, Ohio at the end of April and set three new land speed records with that 2002 Chevrolet Monte Carlo that I drove when I retired with that engine in that Dewey's car. <laughs> well, I guess it would be an understatement to say then you're definitely staying busy in retirement. I definitely am. <laughs> All right, well, thanks a lot, Dave, for taking time with us. Folks, join us again here next week when we'll bring you more great hunting and fishing action from around Wisconsin, around the nation, and around the world, right here on Outdoor Bound TV. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Colby Chrysler Center. Welcome home to Colby Chrysler. Pro Designs, sign and printing solutions. Canada Outdoor Adventures professionally outfitted hunting trips from Canada, New Zealand, and beyond. out of here.